is the first fact of the day. The Great Emu War of 1932 in Western Australia was an utterly quirky and comical episode in history. Once upon a time in the Australian outback, the residents of Western Australia faced an unexpected and feathery foe called emus. Since these flightless birds, known for their quirky personalities, decided to stage a massive invasion of the farmlands during the early 1930s. The emus were on a rampage, and their primary target was the precious wheat crops that fed both humans and kangaroos. The emus, being clever and speedy runners, proved to be formidable adversaries for the farmers. In a desperate bid to protect their wheat fields, the government of Western Australia hatched a plan. Premier Sir George Pearce mobilised an elite unit of soldiers led by the fearless Major GB T.W. Meredith, armed with two trusty Lewis machine guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. They were ready to wage war against the feathered menace. With great determination, the soldiers marched onto the battlefield, ready to confront their formidable foes. But there was just one problem. Emus are really fast and incredibly evasive. The emus, apparently having attended military strategy courses for birds, would split into small groups, making themselves harder to hit. And when the machine guns did fire, they often jammed at the most inopportune moments. It seemed the emus had outsmarted their human adversaries. After weeks of unconventional warfare, it became clear that the emus were not going down without a score. Despite their best efforts, the soldiers had made little progress in controlling the emu population. The farmers were left scratching their heads, wondering if the emus were secretly plotting their next move. In the end, the Great Emu War of 1932 was officially declared a defeat for the human side. The emus, with their wily tactics and fleet feet, had emerged victorious. The emus were not only undefeated, but also had quite a reputation for their resilience in the face of adversity. The legacy of the Emu War lives on as a humorous reminder that sometimes nature has its own plans, and even a well-armed military force can find itself outwitted by a bunch of determined birds. Fact number two. Once upon a time, in a small town on the outskirts of London, there lived a man named Henry. Henry was an eccentric individual with a penchant for bizarre ideas and a love for collecting oddities. He had a reputation in the town for his outlandish schemes and wild imagination. One day, as Henry was scrolling through eBay, he stumbled upon an idea that would become his most audacious endeavor yet. He noticed that people were selling all sorts of items on the platform, from vintage toys to rare coins. But what intrigued him most was the thought of selling an entire country, and not just any country, but New Zealand. Henry couldn't get the idea out of his head. He was convinced that he could be the first person in history to sell an entire nation online. He knew it was a wild idea, but his enthusiasm knew no bounds. With determination and a touch of madness, Henry got to work. He created a detailed eBay listing title for sale. New Zealand, the land of the long white cloud. In the listing, he described New Zealand's stunning landscapes, its unique flora and fauna, and its friendly population. He even added a buy it now price of $1 million thinking it was a fair deal for an entire country. The listing went live and the response was immediate. News of Henry's audacious endeavor spread like wildfire across the internet. People couldn't believe what they were seeing. Some thought it was a hilarious prank, while others wondered if it was some kind of elaborate performance art piece. As the days passed, the bidding on Henry's eBay listing grew increasingly frenzied. People from around the world placed bids thinking they could be the proud owners of New Zealand. News outlets picked up the story, and reporters swarmed Henry's doorstep, eager to interview the man behind the audacious auction. In the midst of the chaos, the New Zealand government took notice. Officials were both amused and bewildered by the situation. They decided to play along with the joke and sent Henry an official letter, thanking him for his interest in selling their country. As the eBay auction reached its climax, it became clear that the bids were skyrocketing far beyond anyone's expectations. The price had surpassed $1 million and showed no signs of stopping. But just as it seemed like the impossible might become reality, a bidder with deep pockets and a sense of humour won the auction. The final bid was a staggering $10 million. It turned out that a wealthy entrepreneur from, from Australia had decided to join the fun and acquire New Zealand as a novelty item. With the auction concluded, Henry celebrated his audacious achievement he may not have become the official seller of New Zealand, 
but he had certainly made his mark in history as the man who tried to sell a nation on eBay. Because for New Zealand, it continued to be the breathtaking land of the long white cloud, untouched by the whims of an eccentric eBay auction. And Henry? Well, he moved on to his next wild and wacky adventure, leaving the world to wonder what he would come up with next. Here's fact number three. Once upon a time, in the vast and sunny Australian outback, there lived a group of kangaroos. These kangaroos were known for their bouncy and curious nature, always hopping around and exploring their surroundings. One fine day, a group of Australian explorers was venturing into the outback, charting new territories and encountering the unique wildlife of the land down under. Among this group of explorers was a linguist named Professor Higgins, known for his enthusiasm for naming and classifying things. As the explorers came across the hopping kangaroos, Professor Higgins was utterly fascinated by these creatures. He watched in awe as they leaped gracefully across the landscape, their powerful legs propelling them through the air. Turning to his fellow explorers, Professor Higgins exclaimed, look at those marvelous creatures. They hop like no other animal I've ever seen. I propose we call them kangaroos. The other explorers paused and exchanged puzzled glances. Kangaroos, one of them asked, why kangaroos? Professor Higgins, always quick with an answer, replied with a mischievous grin, because my friends, kangaroos is the Aboriginal word for, I have no idea what this is. And I must say, it suits them perfectly. The explorers burst into laughter, finding the linguist's explanation both humorous and fitting. And so with a hearty laugh, the name kangaroo was bestowed upon these bouncy, enigmatic creatures. From that day forward, kangaroos were known by their amusing name and Professor Higgins gained a reputation as the explorer with a sense of humour. The kangaroos, for their part, continued to hop along the Australian outback, unaware of the laughter their name brought to humans around the world. And that, my friends, is how kangaroos got their delightfully quirky name. A testament to the whimsical nature of language and the humour of explorers discovering new and extraordinary creatures. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more interesting facts from around the world, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss our future videos. Your support means a lot to us. Stay curious and keep exploring.